Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel and hello especially to you guys, math enthusiasts. In today's video, I'm excited to share with you another interesting problem I've been working on. If you enjoy putting your mathematical skills to the test, then you're in for a treat. Let's jump right in. We have two trigonometric expressions, cosine of sine of x and sine of cosine of x, and the problem wants us to find out which one is bigger than the other one. So when I first started thinking about this problem, so I said to myself, well, I have to figure out if cosine of sine of x is greater than or less than or equal to sine of cosine of x. How about I just consider their difference? And then if this difference is positive, then yeah, obviously cosine of sine of x is greater than sine of cosine of x. And if it is negative, it's the other way around. So let's just do what I explained and I'm going to consider their difference and let's call this difference as D. So D is basically cosine of sine of X minus sine of cosine of X. So sine of X here acts like an angle. I have cosine of an angle minus sine of an angle and in order for me to simplify this, I decided to use a famous trigonometric identity, which is basically this one. So you, I hope that you know that we have for every alpha, cosine of alpha plus P over 2 equals to minus sine of alpha. In other words, this part, I can write that part as plus cosine of alpha plus P do p divided by 2 and here alpha is cosine of x. So then I have d equals to cosine of sine of x plus cosine of cosine of x plus pi over 2. Beautiful. I still, okay, I could manage to produce two cosine expressions, but it's still it's not really that simplified. I cannot generally opine about this difference. So then I decided to use another trigonometric identity, and that is the following. So we know that if I have two angles, cosine of A um, plus cosine of B, this can be written as 2 cosine of A plus B over 2 times cosine of A minus B over 2. How did I come by this formula? So I hope that you know that we have another formula which can easily be improved using geometry. And that is cosine of, let's say I have two angles, alpha plus beta. And this is indeed cosine of alpha times cosine of beta. Uh, minus sine of alpha times sine of beta. So I don't prove this identity. However, I'm going to use this identity to derive this identity here, just for you guys to know that that is nothing really strange. You don't need to memorize all of these identities. So in this identity here, if I just put minus beta, then I get cosine of alpha minus beta equals to cosine of alpha Cosine of minus beta is cosine of beta. And here I get plus sine of alpha times sine of beta because just sine of minus beta is minus, minus sine of beta. So I have these two identities. And let's just imagine alpha is the same as a plus b over 2 and beta is the same as a minus b over 2. If you just... Uh, replace a alpha and beta in these two formulas with these values. So alpha plus beta will be basically a plus b over 2 plus a minus b over 2, which is basically a, and alpha minus beta, the same will, will become b. And then when you have on the, on the left side of these two equations, you have cosine of um, a and equals to yeah some 
expression, and then here you have cosine of b, and then you basically sum up both sides of these equations, and you get cosine of a plus cosine of b, and then you come, uh, you reach to this formula here. So I'm not going to do that. I'm sure you can do this, but that is how you prove it. So I'm going to use this identity to simplify this guy, this difference here. So let's do that. So we have d equals to this expression here, cosine of sine of x plus, so here basically this is alpha and this is beta. And I just write it here. It will become 2 cosine of, um, so it will become sine of x plus cosine of x, sine of x plus cosine of x plus pi over 2 divided by 2. And here I have cosine of sine of x. So just pay attention here. I could write sine of x. Well, let's just write it. I don't want to make it complicated. So cosine of x minus pi over 2 divided by 2. In order to have pi over 2 in both so that they're, they look the same. So again, I use this identity. Cosine of beta equals to cosine of minus beta. So I just multiply this angle inside cos the second cosine by minus. So d becomes 2 cosine of um, sine of x plus cosine of x plus pi over 2 divided by 2 times cosine of, uh, here I get cosine of x minus sine of x plus pi over 2 divided by 2. Okay, I have two expressions here. One is sine of x plus cosine of x, and one is cosine of x minus sine of x. In order to, for both to be the same, maybe actually I can here write cosine of x plus sine of x. This is better. I have cosine at the beginning. So let us take a look at this. Let's take gamma equals to cosine of x plus sine of x. What do I know about this? So how can I come up with a lower bound and upper bound for gamma? We know that this is equal to square root of the absolute value of gamma to the power of 2, which is basically uh, sine 2 of x plus cosine 2 of x, which is 1, plus 2 times sine of x cosine of x, which is basically sine of 2x. But sine of 2x is always less than 1, and I can say, well, gamma is always less than square root of 2. Okay? And if I take gamma to be cosine of x minus sine of x, this is also equal to square root of 1 minus sine of 2x, but this is always also, because in the worst case scenario, sine 2 of x can be minus 1, then it, I have 1 minus minus 1, which is plus 1. Again, this is always less than the square root of 2. So, if gamma is always, whether it is cosine of x plus sine of x, or cosine of x minus sine of x, if it is always less than um, square root of 2, maybe I can do something with that. So, in the first scenario, so let's take cosine of x plus sine of x, then I have, um, so gamma plus pi over 2, um, well, let's write gamma again. So I, I saw that gamma is always, in both cases, gamma is always less than square root of 2, but the square root of 2 is more or less um, 141, 42, and if I comp compare that with pi over 2, it is less than pi over 2, which is basically 157 something, okay? So I can say gamma is always um, less than pi over 2. Therefore, I have here gamma plus pi over 2 in, as an angle divided by 2, then this is always less than, if this is true, then this should be always less than pi over 2 plus pi over 2 divided by 2, which is basically pi over 2. It doesn't matter whether gamma is um, 
this part or gamma is this part. In both cases, whether gamma is this or gamma is this, these two angles, well, we can call it generally gamma 1 and gamma 2, those two angles are always going to be less than pi over 2. But we can actually uh, find the lower bound for gamma, which is basically minus square root of 2. And we can also um, deduce that this is always uh, greater than 0, because in the worst case scenario, you have minus square root of 2 plus pi over 2. And pi over 2 is basically 157 minus 141, which is again a positive number. In other words, I can say always gamma 1 is greater than 0 and great, less than uh, pi over 2. In the same way, I can say gamma 2 is great, greater than 0, less than pi, pi over 2. And if I have such an angle, the cosine of, um, obviously cosine of gamma 1 and cosine of gamma 2 always greater than 0 which means if those two cosines are always greater than zero, then that difference, so you remember D was cosine of sine of X uh, minus sine of cosine of X, and that is always greater than zero. In other words, I have cosine of sine of X greater than sine of cosine of X. So that was the proof. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you enjoyed it, uh, make sure that you like my video and share it with your friends. And uh, this helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Until next problem, see you. Have a good day.